Hi everyone, welcome back to Homeschool Peace. I'm Cassandra. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you more of the Good and the Beautiful Science. The Good and the Beautiful Science programs is what we use here at our home. And in a recent video, I had a walkthrough of three of the science units sharing some sample lessons from Water in the World, Botany, and as well as the human body. And I received some really great feedback from that video. People really asking for more, if they could see some more samples of some walkthroughs of these lessons. And so today, that's what this video is all about. I'm going to be sharing the Good and the Beautiful Space Science Unit. This space science unit was one of the favorite units that we did here at our home. So I'm really excited to share this unit with you. So jumping into the space science unit, the first thing I just wanna say, if you've never prepped one of these science units, check out the prep video I have linked below. There's just a few things that you're going to need to do, like say laminating some sheets, creating some small mini books, as well as like laminating and cutting out smaller things that are part of the unit. So make sure you check out how to prep one of these units before you get started. That'll just help you out as you're teaching. Starting on the very first page, we can see that there are 16 lessons within the space science unit. Most of these lessons I did over two days. I split them across two days of sitting. You know, when you talk about introduction to space or a little bit later, it's the history of astronomy. I was able to do that in just one sitting, but when we were talking about the actual planets, say for lesson four, it ends up doing Mercury and Venus within one lesson. I split that over two for sure. Had one day that we just talked about Mercury, another day that we just talked about Venus. So that really helps splitting the lessons over multiple days. In my home, I was using this space science unit for my students in pre-K through second grade. I felt like this space science was a great fit for those younger elementary ages. Some of the good and the beautiful units that we have done, say like the human body or kingdoms and classifications is another one that just is a little bit more advanced for somebody in those lower elementary ages. Now, if you have kids that are a little bit older, maybe they're in their upper elementary ages to their beginning middle school ages, you know, you could still do this program with them. You would just wanna add on maybe a few extra things, having them maybe write out their vocabulary words, as well as maybe doing some additional reports Ports, and there have some lesson extensions that are built into the lessons, so you can definitely use them for older kids, but if you are new to the good and the beautiful and you have those younger students, this unit is such a great fit for those young elementary school ages. The next section is just your unit information. Just read through it before you begin. It does talk about making sure you have a science journal for each of your kids. For my family, I just use one of these three-prong folders and I just have them add some blank pieces of paper or notebook paper to it so they're ready to go for doing their activities. You wanna have also a space science wall. So if you do not have a spot in your house that you could stick up the vocabulary words that you have as part of the program, so these are some of the vocabulary words. If you don't have a spot where you can stick these up on a wall in your house, you can also use a three-fold foam core board, as well as you could also just use some type of large binder book that some of the pages maybe can open up. You could actually stick some of your vocabulary words within a binder and just have those open during science time if you don't have a wall. So there's some options there, but you do wanna make sure you have your science wall. It also goes through making sure you have your mini books prepped, as well as just having any of the materials on hand for some of the activities. Now for the space science unit, I have to say out of any of the Good and the Beautiful units, there wasn't a whole lot that I had to have prepped ahead of time for supplies, for science experiments. Some of the units that I've done with, say, meteorology or water in the world, there was a lot of supplies I had to gather for each lesson. This one felt more open and go. There's definitely a few things I need to have on hand, but they were really easy. So I really enjoyed as the teacher that there wasn't a ton of things that I had to prep ahead of time. That moves us into the next page, which is the supplies needed. And you can see here that there's a lot of the lessons that there are no additional supplies needed. They're just listed none, but there are a few here and there that you'll wanna have and gather that ahead of time. There is also um, just the notes about this unit, as well as a few read aloud recommendations. Now I love using our Usborne books, and so I would use many of the Usborne books that we have that are science and space related. So I use those during our reading time, but there is a list of a few recommendation books that they have right here within the notes about the unit. 
So let's jump right into a sample lesson. Today I'm going to be sharing lesson one, the introduction to space. And for this lesson, we're going to help the children feel the wonder of the universe and understand the basic terminology of space science. So there are some Bible verses that you are to read to your children during these lessons. If you have a certain translation of the Bible that you would prefer, you can obviously pull out your Bible and read, but today I'm just going to be reading right from the book. So it starts out that says, in our Bible we read, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is the name in all the earth. When I consider thy heavens and the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. So then I would ask my children, what things does the scriptures teach us that God made? And they would answer the heavens, the moons and the stars. And then I would continue reading through this part of the unit, talking about what we are going to be learning about and understanding the majestic nature of God. And so here we're going to pull out some pictures. The lesson has us take taking a look at a photo, and this would have come just as an eight and a half by 11 sheet, which I then laminated prior to the lesson, of a photo from the Hubble Space Telescope. And I would give my kids some time to just sit there and look at the picture. And sort of during this time, think about the grandeur of God who created such majestic things, talking about how big it is and how great it is. Then I would pull out this photograph, and this is just a close-up of a rose. And I would have my children also look at this picture and talk about how God made something so great as our universe, but something as small and delicate as this small, tiny rose. And so we'd take that time and compare both of those photos. Moving to the next part, there's another Bible verse that you would read to your children. From there, there are the vocabulary words. Now these vocabulary words, you would then have laminated ahead of time and you would put up on your science wall or that trifold board. So this one is the solar system. So I'd have my child read that out loud or I would read it. We have the galaxy. So we would then stick that on there as well as the Milky Way. So these would be our vocabulary words for the day and we would read through them. We would take some time talking specifically about the solar system card, asking my children, you know, what is the center of the solar system, the sun, you know, how many planets revolve around the sun and what's their names, giving them a chance to say those names of the planets. For learning the planets, my children really enjoyed Kids Learning Tube. They have some great videos on YouTube, ones for space science. I have a link below to some of those videos. Check those out. I love the song for learning the planets. My kids did too. And then when you're learning and studying each individual planet, there's some great facts that they drop in those videos. And so you can play, let's say if you're learning about Mercury, you can play their video about Mercury while you are learning about it. So it's such a great um, tool. So check that out, links are below. So after going through this picture of the solar system, it has you then pulling out your science journal for your student and have them write the solar system at the top and then draw a picture of the solar system right into their journals. Moving into the next part of the lesson is using these planet cards. So they have these nice little cards and so as you're learning your planets, you can stick them onto your science wall. You can also lay them flat on the table so that they would practice doing their Mercury, their Venus, the Earth, Mars, going through their different planet cards. So these are really great practice for your kids along with if you bring up those songs singing the planets in order while they're pulling up these cards. So I highly recommend that. Now, if you feel like that's enough for one lesson after going through that, you could stop there. If you have say older kids and they still are good to keep going, you could move into the next section, which talks more about our galaxy. So moving into the next part of the galaxy, which could be your potential day two of this lesson, or if your kids are just ready to go, you would pull out this card, Galaxy, and you would have your students read this card. It has here right in the book, you just read through it to your students, that science used to think about the universe was made up of just one huge group of stars. About 100 years ago, scientists realized that there were actually many large groups of stars in the universe, so you would continue reading that through. Then you would go back to this science journal and have your student write galaxy at the top and illustrate what they would picture or think of the galaxy. So have them draw their own galaxy on their piece of paper. 
From there, you have your Milky Way card, and so this is for the Milky Way, and we would talk about how the Earth's galaxy is known as the Milky Way. Our planet's solar system is made up of the sun and the planets that encircle it, and it's only a tiny part of the Milky Way. So from there, they have this fun activity that uses this sheet called the Milky Way Facts, so you can put that down on the table, and then you have these little cards that I laminated and cut out ahead of time, and they're just fun little Milky Way facts. So the Milky Way does not sit still, it's constantly rotating. So you could use some sticky tack and you can actually like stick them onto the paper or obviously you could just keep them on the paper and just go through it with your students. So you can go through that only one in three people live far enough from city lights in the United States to see the Milky Way band with their naked eye. So again, just fun facts about the Milky Way and they would just go through it. A lot of times what I like to do just to make it fun, I'll hold them like this and tell my kids, pick a card, you know, any card you wanna pick. And so they'll just randomly go around the table picking a card and then I'll read it. If you have some older kids, you could have them read it. So this was a fun activity just talking about the Milky Way facts. For this lesson, if you ha want to, you don't have to, it's optional. You can pull out little Milky Way bars and this is just something to reinforce the idea of our Milky Way galaxy, have them enjoy a little snack of the Milky Way candy bar during their science lesson. The very last part of the lesson is just an activity of it's quiet up there. So you have your kids do something to make some noise, like sing, bang, uh, clap, whatever, and talk about how that there's no noise in space, so noise cannot be made, sound waves cannot travel without air, so there's it's quiet up there. So this was fun, I made my kids make lots of noise and clap and yell, and then I'd say, now I'll pretend we're in space, and then they like go like this and clap or go ah, and try to yell, but then they pretend that there wasn't any noise at all. And the last thing is dark up there. So this is just a thing for you to read to your kids that we can see the lights that come from the sun and the stars, but God designed our planet to be nice and bright because light bounces off of tiny particles in our atmosphere. So you're just reading right from the book about how it's dark up in space. So that's the end of one of these lessons. So you can see how you can easily break this over two days, one talking more about the solar system and the next day talking more about our Milky Way galaxy, or you could combine them both together in one sitting. And that's a sample of a lesson within space science. While doing the space science, I did want to point out two really fun things that are, is in the lessons as you continue through. So when you start talking specifically about the planets, there's this fun little planets of the solar system pocket that the PDF to print this is right included right into the material so you can print these up for your students and I just used a hard piece of paper right behind it to make that pocket and so we spent one day that they just got this pocket and let them color it and then there are these little planet cards you print these up ahead of time so for this first one was my son did for Mercury and so it talks about like what is its position from the sun, number of moons, size compared to the earth, time to orbit the sun, the length of a day compared to the rotation of its axis, any unique physical features, and any interesting facts. So these are things that your kids can do and then draw a picture. My kids loved going through this, so as we were learning each of those planets, especially those days that had, say, Mercury and Venus in the same lesson, you know, breaking that over two days was really helpful so that one day they would do this piece of paper specific for Mercury, and then the next day that we would do the lesson, they would do one specifically for Venus. So that was really helpful. And then playing those kids learning two videos, you know, I was able to play just one video, say the Mercury video, the day that we were doing the Mercury in here, as well as reading some of our Us Born books that really filled up the whole entire lesson. The last thing that I wanted to share, and I have it hanging up here, is just this wooden mobile. This one, I will include the link of it on Amazon. It was just a great little pickup that I did, and these little wooden planets were just a fun activity. So as we were learning Mercury, we would do this paper, we would watch the video, practice our planet song, as well as they would then paint Mercury and create their mobile as we built it each individual lesson as we were learning about the planets. That was such a fun addition, so I highly recommend it. Really great addition to the space science unit. I hope you enjoyed walking through the good and the beautiful space science with me. I really enjoyed this unit. I hope you enjoy it as well. If you have any questions about what I shared today, leave those questions below. And before you leave, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.